So, um, good morning, everybody. Um, we're going to start by um, chanting the, sorry, the homage to the Triple Gem. Um, so I'll chant that, and if you'd like to join in, then do. Arahang Samma Sambudho Bhagawa Budhang Bhagawantang Nabiwa Devi Swakato Bhagawata Dhammo Dhammang Namasami Supati Panno Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Sangham Namami. So um, this talk is on the four um, Itipadas, um, and these are often translated as the bases of success, or sometimes as the roads to power. Um, and maybe the, the second translation gives you um, a certain feel to one aspect of them. So, as a list, they're um, part of the Bodhi Pakyadhammas, the 37 requisites of enlightenment. Um, and this list includes um, the four foundations of mindfulness, the four right efforts, the, um, the four Yudhipadas, the five faculties, the seven Bojangas, um, the eight, and the eightfold path. So from this, it's clear that the Idipadas are a very <coughs> integral part of the um, Buddhist teaching. Um, but it's interesting, when you, when you start to read about them, um, one, of the kind of, one of the people who has written a little bit about them says, well, all the others, all these other groups, there are whole books written about them, but there's no book written about the four bases of success. Um, and this may be because <clears throat> in the text, there, um, quite a lot of the way they're related is to um, psychic powers um, or to um, attaining jhana sometimes or or else to um, transcendent states. But um, in fact, um, they are applicable um, in everyday life, perhaps just as much as in these other ways. And um, one of the clues to that is um, there's a list called the uh, um, there's a list called the um, Dhammakaya, which relates different parts of the um, Buddhist teaching to different parts of the body. And the four Idipadas are the two excellent feet. So our feet are always with us. Um, so um, just uh, that maybe gives an indication of perhaps potentially how kind of integral um, they are, and also a potential some idea of something to do with their nature, um, something to do with that kind of stability of the feet. Um, hmm. So, so, um, so the four Idipadas, there are, the, there are various translations for them. Um, and perhaps the best introduction 
um, is a particular story which we are now going to hear read. Um, and that will give you an idea, an initial idea of what they're about. Do you, want, do you want me to go ahead with that, Francis? Yes, yeah, please, please, Mark. Yeah, that'd be. So these are to do with the, the four. Uh, desire to act, effort or strength, mind or investigation. Uh, and investigation. And it is like the case of four ministers who, aspiring to a position, lived in close association with the king. One was energetic in waiting upon the king. Knowing the king's wishes and desires, he waited upon him night and day. He pleased the king and obtained a position. The one who produces transcendent Dhamma with desire to act as chief should be understood as like him. Another, however, thought, I cannot wait upon the king daily. When a task needs to be done, I shall please him by my valour. When there was trouble on the borders, he was posted by the king, and having crushed the enemy by means of his valour, he obtained a position. The one who produces transcendent Dhamma with effort as chief should be understood as like him. Another thought, Waiting upon the king, taking swords and arrows on the chest is burdensome. Surely kings grant positions to those of good birth. When the king grants a position to such a one, he will grant it to me. So, relying solely on his possession of good birth, he obtained a position. The one who produces transcendent Dhammo with mind as chief should be understood as like him. Another thought... What need of waiting upon the king and so on? I shall please the king by the power of my counsel. Having pleased the king by providing counsel, by means of his grasp of statecraft, he obtained a position. The one who produces transcendent Dhamma with investigation as chief, relying on thoroughly purified investigation, should be understood as like him. Thanks, Mark. Um, so... So we have the four. Um, so there's wish to do, effort, and chitta. So um, it's interesting in the story, um, this is to do with something to do with naturally succeeding. Um, and you may think of it as the kind of natural purity of consciousness um, or just kind of naturalness would be another way of looking at it. Um, and the last is is Vimangsa, which is investigation or wisdom. But I quite like the the version in the um, in the story of um, of um, good counsel, because that covers a variety of different ways of looking at that particular quality. So, Chanda, wish to do. So sometimes, sometimes we have lots of things we may wish to do in life many things just in that moment, many, many um, possibilities. Um, actually, before I come on to this, <laughs> I realized there is something I, I, I've missed out. So there's a particular formula, which is, com which frequently recurs in relationship to these four. So I will read out the formula. Because these four bases of success, when developed and cultivated, lead to going beyond, from the near shore to the far shore. What for? Here, bhikkhus, a bhikkhu develops the basis for success that possesses wish to do, concentration, and forces of endeavor. 
he develops the basis for success that possesses strength, concentration, and forces of endeavor. He develops the basis for success that possesses naturally skillful mind, concentration, and forces of endeavor. He develops the basis for success that possesses investigation, concentration, and forces of endeavor. These four bases of success, when developed and cultivated, lead to going beyond from the near shore to the far shore. So they all have this combination, both of their particular factor, but also with concentration and with forces of endeavor, or, um, or um, some degree of endeavor. And it's perhaps this combination of the three um, which is the key to them. Um, if you look at trans the, the original Pali just has all three words um, as a compound word. Um, but within various translations, they often, um, they often combine the concentration along with the particular quality. Um, but I don't think that necessarily needs to, needs to stand like that. Um, so what does it mean here by um, concentration? So perhaps in the everyday moment, um, you can think of it as something calm and stable. And whenever there is a quality of something calm and stable, along with the particular quality, and with some uh, energy or enough energy to actually carry out what needs to be done, then perhaps that is the, the key, key to these four. So we'll look at them individually. So Chanda, wish to do. How do you know what you want to do? At any moment, what is the right thing to do? Um, sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's, sometimes it isn't easy. There are lots of possible things we can do. Um, and working out which, which almost the right thing to do at that moment. How do you do that? Well, perhaps for a moment connecting with something calm and stable. Almost the kind of the peace of the practice just for a moment may help to um, clarify what it is, what is the, the thing that you would be most, most useful to do, perhaps. Because wish to do is a funny thing. It's not, not always the immediate thing we wish to do. There may be something mm, kind of deeper or underlying, maybe that we don't quite so much want to do, but actually, in a sense, part of us knows is the thing we should do. And so it's trying to connect with that, like what you might call the kind of deeper wish to do, the more skillful wish to do, um, which, is, uh, which is perhaps what this is about. Um, so also there's, you can look at wish to do, it's interesting, I mean, in terms of involvement, um, when you're doing something that you're not sure you wish to do, um, and there's, a, there's a, 
a monk who gave a talk on these. Um, and he had a nice phrase, uh, when you can't get out of it, get into it. Um, and so there's something, at times there can be something of that, something you, you need to make the most of whatever, or whatever, um, of whatever situation you're in. Um, so also, Sometimes, um, sometimes wish to do almost, uh, it, it loses its wish, if you like. We started off wanting to do it, and now there's not, not so much interest, enthusiasm. So, so what do we do in that situation? Well, perhaps you can, you can think of it in four ways which are related, in fact, to the Udipadas. So sometimes maybe you um, need to... Um, need to um, rediscover your wish. Sometimes you may need to remind yourself why, why you originally started out. Um, and sometimes you need to almost like renew your enthusiasm. So it's almost as though you have to find the Find the joy, find the pleasure in what you want to do. Um, and sometimes just paying even a slight, slight attention to that may be enough actually to, to change it. Um, in Thailand, they're quite good at, at having fun. And they have a saying, which is, my sanuk. And uh, this, is, this means no fun. And this is the most kind of damning thing you can say about anything, really, if it's my sanuk. Uh, and if you ever observe them, they are very good at, even if they're out in the fields working, they're kind of talking, engaging, and laughing. Um, so often, if you look, there are ways to, ways to kind of rediscover the pleasure in a particular activity, or to find the pleasure. Um, so, if you like that, that's the sign of sort of finding the wish to do, the wish to do. Um, and sometimes when the wish to do gets less, um, we need more kind of effort, if you like. We need to just carry on. Um, and if you have a been on a week of um, practice uh, at Green Street. You may know there's often a point in the week where actually things get difficult. It's not quite hard to keep going. Um, but a bit of one knows that in fact, if you do keep going, then actually something just transforms, something changes. Mm. And sometimes the other way may be that you need to, to change something slightly about how you do things. You may need to get a bit creative. So to find you've been doing something particular, but you need to find some slightly different way of doing it, some slightly different angle. Um, something which kind of renews it in some way, even just for one or two times. And then you can, then, then maybe that will help you through the, through the, um, the block, the difficulty. Um, and you could see that maybe by being the kind of chitta aspect. 
Um, and then sometimes when there is no wish to do, um, you may need um, the kind of good counsel and um, partly to know which of these to do, but also sometimes you need to take a break. Sometimes actually something has kind of run its course as it were, or um, so you need to have a break and then maybe something else will come up or, or some other, um, or you may then restart after a little bit. But that kind of wisdom that um, knowing which of these to apply, which is the which is the correct kind of dhamma in this situation, um, is it's very interesting how you how you know. And there's but in all these, but in all these, there's something about this concentration. So at that moment, if there's some connection with something calm and stable, it may be much easier to know what you need to do. Even for a moment, maybe it's just you can bring it to mind, or maybe it's a connection, even one in-breath and out-breath. Maybe enough. So the next is um, virya effort. So this is slightly strange because we already have we have effort, concentration, and forces of endeavor. So how is the, the virya, the effort here, different from the forces of endeavor? Um, well, one way of looking at that is, um, the, is the, um, the traditional explanation, which is to look at it in, in terms of the four right efforts. And so this um, separates effort out into different types of effort. Um, which in some ways makes it easier to relate it to a particular situation. Um, so the first form of effort is to do with restraining or avoiding. So you're trying to hold back from things which are unskillful or avoid situations which may lead to unskillfulness. Um, and again, that this aspect of the sort of something calm and stable is very useful. If you're debating whether to have that extra piece of cake or not, then for a moment, just to become aware of something in your nature that is calm and stable, may help you to make whatever the appropriate decision is for a moment. Um, so this, this aspect of concentration of calm in almost any, any point can make things um, easier. Um, so the second um, of the right efforts is to do with um, abandoning. So this is abandoning things which we are thinking or perhaps sometimes doing or speaking which are unhelpful, unskillful. Um, and sometimes in fact even in kind of common parlance people say when well, you kind of take a deep breath you find yourself involved in a particular route, an argument's just starting or whatever, and you take a deep breath. And there's something about that, again, finding that calm and stable point, 
which may then help that process, help the effort to abandon it, whatever it is. Um, and then the third one is to do with initiating or arousing skillful states. Um, so, this is interesting in a way. How do you do something? How do you do something new? Um, how do you arouse the skillful? So maybe it's to do, it's partly almost to do with following uh, something kind of instinctive sometimes, um, a, a kind of instinctive thought. Um, so, but again, sometimes if we, we we see something is needed. We see something actually different is needed. Um, sometimes not, not quite clear what, but again, coming to that sort of calm and stable point may then help us to, to find whatever it is that we need to arouse or something creative perhaps in the moment. Um, and then the last of the four right efforts is to do with maintaining and, and developing. Um, and this perhaps, I mean, it's, a, it's partly maybe to do with a sort of lighter form of effort, but a, a, a almost a wiser form of effort. Um, how do you keep something going? Well, it's it's interesting. I mean, there may be there may be kind of points in when you're trying to when you you've got something going, and a bit of you knows actually if you don't do it today, it's all going to the whole thing's going to get very difficult. Um, so sometimes it's to do with that sort of understanding actually this is the moment that you need to that you need to keep on with it um, and also the a sort of lightness of effort sometimes um, something's changed, when something's established, we need to relax with it a little bit more perhaps, or um, let it happen more on its own rather than trying to control it so much. Mm. So the next is chitta. So as I said, I prefer the the um, the kind of usage of this that I find personally most helpful is um, in this context is of um, naturally. So in the story, the, the particular minister, it, he just naturally succeeded. Um, and you see that sometimes you're not trying to do anything, but it just happens, or you're not trying to get promotion, but suddenly it, it kind of comes your way, or many, many things in life may just happen without us putting in the effort or the wish to do. And sometimes they're even more likely to happen. We've actually stopped, stopped putting in, we've kind of let go of the other two, and then something kind of comes together and seems to work. Um, so that, but how do we, how do you develop naturalness? How, how can you develop a naturally skillful mind or that, that sort of ability? Well, it's 
It's very interesting. I mean, there's something about naturalness which is quite relaxed. Um, and which, if you like, um, maybe maybe follows one's instinct more. Um, and again, there's something about this sort of contact with something calm and stable. So you're not in a conversation, you're not quite sure is this the the moment to keep it on is this the moment when you should stop and just for a moment becoming aware of something more calm and stable may may tell you what the sort of natural the natural thing to do is or you may just instinctively know but almost just being aware of what is the natural thing to do here there's something about the kind of going with the flow of the situation um, which can be very, very, very skillful. Um, probably seen, some people are very good at it. They just seem to instinctively know and clearly, clearly operate in that sort of way. Um, and perhaps the, the other way to potentially develop it is what's called spontaneous chitta. So within Abhidhamma, there's an idea of thoughts that come up spontaneously and thoughts which are um, instigated or prompted. And there is, <clears throat> there can something, be something about spontaneous thought um, which can come from something very um, instinctively deep, if you like. Um, and it's whether you listen to your that spontaneous thought or not, whether you follow it. Um, and obviously it's difficult to know. Sometimes it may be skillful, sometimes it may be less skillful. But again, having at the moment it comes, if there's something of that calm and uh, calm and stable present, then perhaps it is worthwhile doing, even if it's something you wouldn't normally do. Um, and it may be as small as you suddenly have the idea to go a different route in the car, or you suddenly have the idea to leave for a appointment, even though it's much too early. There may be 101 small ways in which um, you, can, you can follow it. Um, as I say, sometimes very, it's very kind of particularly useful things happen when we do things we couldn't predict, things we couldn't kind of consciously know sometimes may result um, from following it. Um, but again, the, the key, I think, because obviously lots of thoughts can come up, but the key is that if there's something calm and stable present, then it's, it's unlikely to be something it's, 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 it's it's something worth considering. Um, and there's a lot of energy often with following the spontaneous. And in certainly within Abhidhamma, spontaneous chitta is thought to be stronger. Um, um, so the um, so the last of the four is Vimangsa. Um, it can be translated as investigation, examination. Um, but I, as I said, I like the translation of, of good counsel. Um, so how do, you, how do you develop that? Um, so 
So it's partly investigation, in a sense, it implies a question. So it's almost you to do sometimes with asking why or, or what. Why, why has this happened? Why have things unfolded in this way? Why is this person behaving like that? Or it may be to do with what? What, what do I need to do? What would be useful? What would be helpful? Um, so in terms of investigating, considering. And again, sometimes often to find the answer, then returning for a moment to that calm and stable base, or perhaps to the one in breath and out breath, may, may help that process. Um, but sometimes one does have to consider quite carefully and I suppose honestly as well. Um, and perhaps the other form of um, good counsel is more, more an instinctive knowing. It is as though you sort of ask your own good counselor, what should I do here? And he or she, just pops up with the answer, just like it's just immediate. A bit of a, a bit of your mind knows um, actually exactly what you should do. But sometimes you have to ask your ask your good counsellor, um, bring them to mind. Um, and again, that sort of, it's the calm and stable base, which is often the root for that. For, uh, hmm. So, um, so those are the, those are the four. Um, so besides looking at them individually, um, you can, it's quite, may see instances where there is a sequence to them. Um, so almost if you, it's as though you kind of want to do the practice and you have to put the effort in to get down and to separate yourself from everyday matters. Um, and then you apply your mind and maybe there comes a point where you need to just let things happen more. Um, and then there's another aspect of the sort of the wisdom aspect of knowing how long to practice for and when to change stage and, and aspects like that. Um, and in fact, they're often, as you've seen, related one to another. Um, one, may, one may assist another. Um, So the other way that they're the other way that they're looked at within um, suttas is in terms of um, dominance, a deeper deep, um, and. There are various ways of looking at that. I mean, I've certainly heard it said that um, for, for each person, there is one of these, which is in a sense, their particular itipada. So there is one, one of these, which is um, particularly either strong or useful for them. Um, and something it's 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 quite interesting to do um, is maybe is to look back um, 
to a few instances in the past or an instance in the past where something has gone for you particularly well, there's been particular success. And to think what the particular qualities were that, were that enable that to happen. So the particular, what, what particularly for you seemed to be helpful in, um, in succeeding. Um, but I think it's also useful to develop them all, even though one may be, may be particular. Um, and there's certainly looking at the ones that are less easy for you or less uh, come, come less immediately can be very um, helpful. Um, and the other way they're seen as dominant is that one may naturally come certain moments of kind of transformation. One may, one may naturally be particularly strong or potent. Um, but that may not be anything we can, um, we can do anything about. It's, it's more something that will happen. Um, but perhaps if we've developed them in some way, then it's more likely to happen. Um, hmm. So, um, I, the, um, there's a book called the um, Patisambada Magga, The Path, um, of discrimination and it lists 10 kinds of success um, and it's quite interesting particularly the, the first and the last so the first is success as resolve as aditana um, that's maybe particularly worth bearing in mind and there's something about resolving um, a sort of skill in resolving, almost knowing how to resolve to do something. Um, and for some people, it's quite easy. They, they kind of naturally are very good. They, they say they're going to do something and they, they always do it. Um, and for the rest of us, it's much more difficult. We, we, uh, <laughs> not so, not so easy. But um, maybe um, one of the key things is to make the resolve achievable, particularly in in time. So if you want to try doing something different or new, well, you'll do it for the next. You'll try it in the next hour or the next day or even maybe for three days, but I'll make it um, at least time limited, um, at, at, at least from, for, for certain, certain sorts of results, um, or more, more kind of ordinary everyday results. Um, and, the, and the last um, of these, um, of the 10 is it's, it's put as success as succeeding with a task right for the particular occasion. Um, and that is maybe uh, what success is all about. It's in the end is to do with responding to the particular situation, whatever that may be. Uh, so, and that's the, that concludes what I want to say. Um, but there's also um, a practice, well, a practice, an exercise, maybe is a better word, to do with the four pardons which is um, 
described in the suttas and which um, we can now try if you would like to. It doesn't take very long. Um, it's actually probably best done standing up, not sitting down, but it's not vital. So if that's difficult for you. And it's also um, done, if you can, best facing a window. Um, so we'll just... So when we, when we do the exercise, um, the more you can experience the things it mentioned. So at one point it's to do with um, four directions. And if you can kind of experience the direction as it said, and also with each itipada, um, it may be useful if you can, if there's some particular part of the body that you would associate that itipada with, that may be helpful. Um, um, so, um, so first of all, just stand and feel your Feel your feet on the ground, flat on the ground, something stable. Have the knees maybe just very slightly bent so you have the lock taken out of them. And the posture is upright but also relaxed. So I'll read this out and try and experience it within, your, within yourself as much as you can. My wish to do will be neither too slack nor too strained. It will be neither constrained within nor distracted without. As in front, so behind. As behind, so in front, as below, so above, as above, so below, with a heart and mind that are open and unobstructed, I will develop a bright and luminous mind. My effort will be neither too slack nor too strained. It will be neither, neither constrained within or distracted without. As in front, so behind. As behind, so in front. As below, so above. As above, so below. With a heart and mind that are open and unobstructed, I will develop a bright and luminous mind. My naturalness will be neither too slack nor too strained. It will be neither constrained within or, or distracted without. As in front, so behind. As behind, so in front. 
as below, so above, as above, so below, with a heart and mind that are open and unobstructed, I will develop a bright and luminous mind. My good counsel will neither be too slack nor too strained. It will, it will be neither constrained within or distracted without. As in front, so behind. As behind, so in front, as below, so above, as above, so below, with a heart and mind that are open and unobstructed, I will develop a bright and luminous mind. And then become aware of the, the brightness in the visual field and your feet on the ground. And you can then end the exercise. So it's an that's quite a, quite an interesting exercise um, and can be quite um, energizing. Interestingly, as in sometimes the way with these things, when I was doing it, I left out one part. So um, after it does the four directions, it then says, as by day, so by night. As by night, so by day. Um, so there's something of that um, resolve, if you like, the, um, the 24 hour commitment, uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's all I want to say for the moment. For those who are interested, um, and some of you may know there were some groups um, last autumn who looked at this, um, and in the, the final session they did, people did a um, creative contribution on the Udipadas. Um, and these have been collected together um, on a uh, on um, an online um, notice board. Um, so, if you want to to look at the departments more, that will be going. You will be sent an email um, shortly um, with a link to that. If you want to look at uh, different things people have done, and and you'll see. I mean, this is. People have come up with some very different and um, original, to, original and creative ways of uh, of um, of um, looking at them. Okay, so that's the that's that's what I have to say. So, if there are any questions, um, thank you, Francis. Uh, I've got a huge soft spot for the uh, four idiots. <laughs> As you said, uh, there's not much on them uh, out there, but uh, they're great. Uh, uh, short question. Uh, at the beginning, you, you mentioned a Thai uh, saying or like a phrase of mm. or, my, my sanook. Yeah, uh, that's like, correct. And uh, 
Could you say what that meant again? What, what, what it was in English? It, it, it just means no fun. My means no. Um, uh, and the other word means fun. So it's just no fun. Oh, no fun. Just get on with it. We, we, well, I mean, that, that to ties is the kind of <laughs> <laughs> ultimate <laughs> criticism of anything if it was no fun. All oh, right. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, it makes me smile to. Mm. Uh, so yeah, that, yeah, that's good. But by the way, I, I did, I did when we were doing the practice now, standing up. It occur, occurred to me that um, I know we have one. You, you said there's one predominant idi, but uh, mm. I, I I had a strong um, feeling that there, there are also four modes of my getting up and out of bed in the morning. Sometimes uh, it takes a lot of effort. Uh, and then other days, it's just delightful. Yeah, no, no bother, just do it. And uh, I love that. And then uh, I thought, investigation. Oh, yeah, I get I, I'm, I think, oh, what are the consequences if I don't get out? <laughs> I'm betting. There's a, I'll miss that train. Mm-hmm. Disappointment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, it's um, very good. Mm-hmm. Yes, I mean, there are lots of ways in everyday life when you start looking. Yeah, so practical, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. Working. Yeah. I had a, a comment on Francis, you, the, the translation of Chanda's wish, wish to do, yeah, was new for me. I suppose I'd always heard enthusiasm or zeal, <clears throat> right? Um, and yeah, I find them a bit confusing about these different subtle qualities about how they, they differ from each other. Mm. That was, that was interesting. Mm. That the, the wish to do it is important as it were. Enthusiasm seems to have effort and, and kind of energy in, in installed in it. Whereas the wish to do is more basic, I suppose. Mm. Setting the mind to a direction perhaps. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was helpful. Mm. Yes, it's more, um, perhaps it's more kind of general in that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was in one of the groups and, and um, I related the four bases to different stages in life. Um, it, well, in my own life, well, but in the sense of youthful medal and getting on a bit. <laughs> Um, I haven't got it in front of me now, the actual thing that I wrote, but some of the qualities that useful people have, you know, have a, a zest and an enthusiasm and they will go for it, you know, even if this is a bit of lack of consideration, but the natural sort of exuberance and and sometimes that's the quality that that's needed to to go about whatever it is you're endeavouring to do yourself or others. And then there's a kind of um, middle phase where it's more balanced, more, you know, considered and more aware of all the implications and considerations. But I actually felt the the final one, I wish I could match them up because they did match up with Chanda and Vimamsa and Chitta and so on, um, was actually a kind of that naturalness, I think, that you spoke of, um, where perhaps you don't have to try as much to to get it right, but have a natural trust in what you've managed to experience as as you've gone along. Um, You know, not worry about it in the same way, or not kind of, it was like coming coming totally with oneself, being at one with oneself, Mm -hmm. and having uh, that sense. It's almost like I've done the best I can now. I'm just Mm -hmm. going to... uh, be with what is, <laughs> they say, these phrases. But I found that when I was reflecting on my own life and ways of going about things and the bases of success, I could relate it, you know, in that way. And, it, and I found the whole experience of doing that group, and particularly that practice, which was a sort of daily thing, um, very, mm. you know, very good, <laughs> very, uh, help, more than helpful, really, a kind of delight in a way. So I'm glad you reminded us of it, Francis, because <laughs> uh, of course I've let it lapse a bit. But you know, it was um, it was uh, a very good experience. Mm. 
Mm. So maybe getting old is not too <laughs> too bad, actually. You know, uh, in those terms. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, th I think the point about um, chitta, um, the kind of naturalness, there's a sort of something seems to be more um, unified often at that point. I, I think that's, I think that is correct. Yeah. Okay. A question, uh, I, I wondered if you could say a little bit more. You, <clears throat> you mentioned uh, about concentration mm. uh, being uh, a feature of each of the Adipadas. Mm. Um, and you talked about going, you know, like repeatedly kind of going back to a calm and stable place. Mm. Um, and I wondered if you would say a little bit more about the relationship between that and waking up. <laughs> I find the exercise that we did at the end, you know, very awake. Uh, there's something about kind of this sense of going to a calm and stable place, mm. which can easily go to a kind of quiet, possibly sleepy mm. place. So I just wondered if you could you just say a little bit more about that. Um. I, I think it's, yes, I, I think it's a good point. I think it, it often only needs a sort of a momentary connection. Um, and particularly if you sort of connect with that and some of the slight, almost kind of attachment, oh, this is quite nice. Um, and that may, um, maybe it sort of stays a little too long. But it's interesting that a lot of them there is something very much to do with the Adipadas that seems to be related, as you say, to kind of waking up or to um, wakefulness. Um, and um, the sort of when they, in the exercise, when they talk about the luminous mind, they're, they're talking something about something very awake and aware of light as well. Um, and there's a particular exercise that, that, that they suggest, which is really to do with kind of similar to an exercise for, for um, overcoming sleepiness. Um, so it's a question of balancing them in a way. It's, it, it is all three. It isn't just the calm and stable. It's the, it's the forces of endeavor and the, uh, and the particular quality. Mm. Not to lose the forces of endeavor, maybe. So, yeah. Do you, do you recommend the Patisambida Magga? Do I recommend it? Yes. Um, I have a very well thumbed copy on my bookshelf. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it, it has a lot of um, very interesting source material that you won't find anywhere else, but it's not easy to access. Maybe sometime there'll be a group. Um, a group um, looking at it as it is very concentrated, but but sometimes you can just look things up. It has lots of lots of interesting and un unusual bits. Okay. Thanks. Let's say thanks, Francis. Um, enjoyed the talk. Um, I was in one of the groups doing that that you mentioned. Um, so it was, a, it was kind of a good vision to what we can do. Um, and also, um, it's, it's kind of jogged me into uploading a contribution I, I did, which I've never got around to doing. I was wondering if the website was, you know, but it's still up. It, it, it is at the moment, but it won't be very much longer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll see if I can do that today, just quickly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah should have done it a long time ago. Thank you again, anyway, Francis. Thank you. I found myself, when you were talking about naturalness, uh, Francis, thinking about conditioned arising and part of 
of that is that if you see that the conditions are right for something to to progress, then you, you're not fighting against rough edges. It mm -hmm. just tends to flow more. Yeah. And also, um, you're more likely to produce a, an outcome which is appropriate for the for the particular situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I, I think it, it's, it's interesting in terms of effort. There's a particular place um, where they talk about the appropriate flow of effort. So when something's quite balanced, there's just just the right amount of effort, whether it's in the practice or in life or, or wherever. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I was in one of the groups for Nidipada as well as for the four endeavors, I find that Chitta is the key factor in both for effort as well as in the Nidipada. In the sense, it is spontaneous. Uh, spontaneity is the, I find, that is the main um, factor with lots of energy. And I called it effortless effort. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it may seem contradictory, but that, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. The instinctive, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. calm, relaxed, deep state of mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just, uh, I just uh, want to know what others feel about this. Sorry? You... Effortless, effortless effort, um, spontaneity. Think, yeah, yeah, no, I, I think that, that that is very good. I mean, that means it's probably your your um, particular um, idipada means the one yeah. <laughs> particularly suitable for you, who is particularly likely to bring success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that also needs effort, but it is effortless, it's mm -hmm. allowing things to happen. <laughs> in the present, I think. Yes, there is a very subtle effort there. It's uh, There's a kind of awakeness to the possibility that needs to be... Um... I've come for seconds, <laughs> uh, uh, prompted by um, the previous question, because uh, during your talk, w w when you came to the third... Um, uh, component of the it is, you know, chitta. The, 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 there's something where, uh, as uh, the previous person said, uh, you know, that there's a, uh, something beguiling about effortless effort. You know, you're doing it without mm. thinking in a way or pushing it along. And um, we, we, we these days, you know, we, we love the word being spontaneous because uh, it goes with our liberal free sensibilities, you know. But um, I know uh, you mentioned, Francis, in your talk uh, about, you know, how do we convey, um, develop this natural, <laughs> develop naturalness. <laughs> naturalness is kind of paradox in it, but uh, uh, it's true, I think, ref reflecting on it. Uh, and, and the word there is, is some, some kind of practice because uh, uh, we have the phrase going with the flow. And then I went to uh, what athletes talk about sometimes about being in in the zone, you know, when it's uh, they just know what to do. But um, they athletes don't get in the zone without doing a hell of a lot of practice <laughs> and uh, having that store there at least, so that when the time comes, mm. there's an effortless mm. effortlessness. Mm. effortless to it. Mm. Yeah. I, I think for us, because there is so much um, connection with the breath from um, doing the practice, um, that sometimes even just become aware of the in-breath and the out-breath, just, just for a single breath may be enough um, to do something of that. 
it's it's perhaps much much kind of stronger than we realize. It's very, our, um, our years or months or um, long long times of um, practice uh, have instilled something in us. Um, thanks, Francis, for the talk, and I really enjoyed the exercise at the end. And um, I noticed, yeah, you hinted to consider how the different bases were affecting the body. Mm. Um, I don't know if other people found this, but I, I found that they sort of worked upwards. So starting with desire, that, that's clearly, you could think of sexual desire at the base and then going to effort, which is in the gut, and then in the heart, and then yeah. up to discrimination. Um, but so yeah, I found it interesting. It's kind of a whole body mm. process. Mm. Yes. Yes. No. I. I think it. It is interesting. Um, if you go to the website when when it's up, you'll see other other people have had a sort of similar sort of experience. But it may not be the only way to do it. There are different ways. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what sort of connects for you is the important thing. And it's mm -hmm. good that you sort of looked and found what um, where for you it is to be experienced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll chant a blessing to end. Um, Bhavatu sabha mangalang rakantu sabha devata sabha bhutanu bhavena sarasoti bhavantu te Bhavatu sabha mangalang rakantu sabha devata Sabha Dhamma Nubhavena Sarasuti Bhavantu Te Bhavatu Sabha Mangalang Rakantu Sabha Devata Sabha Sangha Nubhavena Sarasuti Bhavantu Te Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you Francis. Hi. Thanks, Francis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.